pertussis testing, collecting a nasopharyngeal aspirate clinical specimen. It is essential to use correct technique when collecting and transporting specimens for laboratory testing. This video will demonstrate how to correctly collect and transport a nasopharyngeal aspirate. Before performing the procedure, make sure you have the following materials on hand. Gloves, a paper surgical mask for covering your nose and mouth. There is no need for an N95 mask. A biohazard bag for disposal of used tubing. Facial tissues for patient use. Eye protection to protect you from coughs, sneezes, or splashes. A shipping container with cold packs and a biohazard label. When collecting a nasopharyngeal aspirate, you'll need a bulb-style aspiration kit or syringe-style aspiration kit. Once you have the necessary supplies on hand, you can collect the specimen. When collecting the nasopharyngeal aspirate, follow these steps. First, put on your mask and eye protection. Following hand washing, put on your gloves. Open the sterile aspirate kit and attach the tube to the syringe. If necessary, slowly expel excess saline through the tube until a volume of 3 milliliters remains in the syringe. Lubricate the tube with lubricating jelly supplied in the kit. Before you begin the procedure, Ask the patient if he or she has a deviated septum or nasal obstruction and have them blow their nose to remove any excess mucus from the nasal cavity. The patient should be in a supine position for specimen collection. The patient's head should be tilted back with their neck extended to allow for the pooling of the aspirate in the nasopharynx. Instruct the patient to hold their breath and not to swallow during the procedure if possible. Tell the patient the procedure will not hurt but may be uncomfortable or cause them to tear or even sneeze. The distance from the nose to the ear gives an estimate of the distance the tube should be inserted. Insert the tube about three to four inches, less for a child, into a nostril, aiming posteriorly along the floor of the nasal cavity until reaching the posterior wall of the nasopharynx, being careful not to insert it upwards. If an obstruction is encountered, try the other nostril. Using a smooth motion and without moving the tube, quickly push and then pull the syringe plunger to expel and aspirate the saline. This must be done quickly to prevent the fluid from draining down the patient's throat. If you feel resistance while aspirating, the tube might be suctioned against the wall of the nasopharynx. If this occurs, retract the tube very slightly and then continue withdrawing the saline solution by pulling back on the plunger. Carefully remove the tube from the nose. Offer the patient a tissue if necessary. Detach the tube from the syringe. Tightly screw the syringe cap onto the syringe to contain specimen during transport. Then dispose the used equipment as according to biohazard waste disposal guidelines. Transport the aspirate specimen to the lab in the capped syringe using cold packs to maintain the specimen at four to eight degrees Celsius. Do not freeze the specimen in the syringe. Plating for culture will need to be completed within 24 hours of specimen collection, so timely transportation to the laboratory is essential. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC.